Hello, I'm Brad Peterson and I run the Executive Briefing Center for Citrix in Santa Clara, California in the heart of Silicon Valley. Here we bring our customers in from around the world to see our products. They meet with our executives and our product subject matter experts and such and we give them a full product demo from end to end of all Citrix products. Now today is all about wow to how and the wow part is the big demo we're going to bring to you guys and the how part is about how you're going to bring these products and solutions and services into your environment. But before we do that, this is all based on the premise in this new world order and a challenge of making certain the IT administrator never comes outside the glass. The administrator manages the hardware, the software, Zen app, Zen desktop, everything is virtualized with Zen server, including our appliances. And it all stays nicely tucked behind the glass. And outside are the end users, and they grab whatever device they choose and connect in using Citrix receiver connect safely into the data center to get their enterprise applications and their virtual desktops delivered to them. So the first step in this tour is application delivery and let's go now. You know as a new employee sometimes you gotta be pretty resourceful. You show up your first day and your desk is clean and you're not quite sure what to do. You want to get to work right away. Well best way to do that is to get a hold of your enterprise applications. And for that, you're going to need a computer. One might show up from IT. Thank you, Tom. And if it does, you can put receiver on it right away and have all your applications delivered via Zen app. Let's do that. If you come into here, open up a browser, that's all it takes to install receiver. And you want receiver on your machine, any device that you want to connect into the data center. If we click and we uh, download and install, you'll find receiver is down here in the sys tray. And as soon as it's installed successfully, it's going to open right up to this user interface that you see here. And this is the self-service user interface, allowing the end user to select the applications they want to run on their machine. So let's do that. Over on the left, all these different application stores, as we click, they show us a number of different apps in here that are available to us as the end user. And yet everybody on the outside, via self-service, with whatever device they choose, wherever they're coming in from, have full access and can be productive and use that particular application. But you know what? I brought my own computer. And that is a MacBook Air. Nice, slim design, wonderful for personal use. I edit movies on here, play with music and so forth all the time, but the good news, I can access all my enterprise applications on here in just the same way. I open the browser, send it off to Citrix Receiver, because that's the key. Receiver on anything, connect in, get your applications, common theme here. And when I get Receiver installed and functional on here, I'll see it in the taskbar. And I open up Receiver to get to that same self-service user interface that you saw on the PC. Now in here, I see SAP there as a choice too. I'm logged on on both sides. If I double click and say I want to run SAP, you're going to see it actually take it off the screen over here and transfer it over to the screen over here. So this is good. I can access these applications wherever I am and on whatever device I am. As long as I'm logged in, doesn't matter where I am, which device, how I'm logged in, when I ask for the app, it'll come straight to me. Because it's not running on these devices, it's running in the data center. And the pixels can be sent anywhere. Now what happens if you're on the road? Disconnect the network. Well, then you can't connect to the applications this way. So the way you do that is stream the applications to the end device. So that's the second way Zen App delivers applications with app delivery. And the way that works is the entire profile of the application, let's say Office Productivity in this case, Office, is packaged up and streamed and run on the CPU and memory on this device right here. After a time expires, bang, it's off the machine and there's nothing left behind. And the big advantage here is, is that you actually never install software on the machine really ever again. You install software in the data center. The IT person installs it in there so that either pixels are sent out or they install it in there so the whole profile is sent down to the machine and executed as though it's installed, but it's not. But the good news, it is here. And I can take it off the network and I can reboot the machine and it'll still run. And we're gonna do that now. We're gonna head off into the world and use these apps out in the wild blue yonder. Here we go. And now we're on the go. So those applications we prepared in Zen app, profiled stream to my laptop, we're going to take them completely off network, 30,000 feet in the air, and be highly productive. Here we go. So here we are now in mid-flight, and we've got apps on a plane. 
And these apps are delivered by ZenApp. They're profiled and then streamed to this machine right here. So they're running on the hard drive memory on this machine. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Outlook. Because we want to work on email while we're here. If I double click on this document here, it knows it's a PowerPoint and it does file type association and it opens up streamed, profiled PowerPoint that was actually delivered and running on this machine. It just knows where it is and it runs it automatically. Now, what happens if I don't have a Windows 7 operating system? And in this case, I have this MacBook Air. I can't stream those same applications and run them on here, so I'm going to need a network connection. Well, it turns out on airplanes, more and more these days, they provide a wireless connection. GoGo -Go Network or something else. Open up the MacBook Air, connect it to the wireless connection, and what I'd do next is I'd open up Receiver, much the same as I would back in the office. I can edit and modify the PowerPoint, I can save it, and I can send it back to the person that sent it to me in the first place. And all of that is actually happening in the data center. And the modest wireless connection for me to it, it's just the pixels being sent and the mouse clicks and keyboard clicks sent back. So it allows me to be highly productive whether I'm on a PC or whether I'm on a Mac. It's ZenApp app virtualization and app delivery at its best. All right, with all that productivity, we have a little spare time on our hands for some shut eye. Oh, and by the way, next up, desktop virtualization. And now we've arrived, desktop virtualization. And this is where we virtualize the entire desktop and deliver it to any device, anywhere, at any time. And the application that we're going to show next is in the manufacturing floor. So let's go into the lab and take a look. Now the difference with desktop virtualization is you don't have a laptop or a desktop or an operating system. You essentially have nothing. So you have to start with something to get your virtual desktop to come to you. Now a great platform for that is a thin client. And here we have an HP thin client and it's running an embedded Windows XP operating system underneath. And what we'll do is authenticate in, log in essentially, and a virtual desktop will be brought to us and that's how we'll work. Now, what if I were on the manufacturing floor and I needed to run some high def manufacturing video? Let's see what happens when we do that. Wow, that was one dangerous manufacturing video. But you know what's interesting about this? It didn't actually render in the data center. If it did, it would have had to send its high def pixels all the way across the network and paint here, and that might have been tough. Now we can do that, but we can do something even better. We automatically detect that this thin client running embedded Windows XP has an embedded Windows media player underneath. And so we talk to it, we have it pull the data stream across the network and render the video for us. But you know, why should I have to be stuck to the workbench here? I should be able to take my manufacturing virtual desktop and take it anywhere I want to go. And I'm going to do just that. Here's an iPad. Imagine what I'm going to do next. iPad, open it up, connect to the App Store. Pull down Citrix Receiver. When Citrix Receiver is down and running, pointed at your Zen desktop broker with your login credentials, you click that icon and it's going to take that virtual desktop off the thin client and it's going to move it right onto the iPad. So the entire manufacturing virtual desktop is now here with me in Portable. All my enterprise apps, all my manufacturing apps, right here. And with that, I can take them anywhere I choose to go. And here we are at the train station. We're going to take this train down the tracks. That same virtual desktop we're going to go mobile with. We put it on the iPad. We had 802.11 a minute ago. Now we're going to go 3G. Here we go. Come on with us. Okay, we caught the train. Actually, while it's moving, this is good. We're moving down the tracks. Now, as we are, this is that same virtual desktop that we saw earlier in the manufacturing floor. It's on the same iPad. Now, the difference here is we're not on an 802.11 connection. We're on a 3G connection going down the train. Same applications that I have here, everything that's given to me off receiver, but also that same video we ran. Let me double-click on the video. 
and I'll show you the difference here. Now we ran earlier on the thin client. The thin client actually had the embedded Windows Media Player, so it helped it along, it rendered it locally. In this case, it certainly doesn't. We have an iPad, and the iPad doesn't have an embedded Windows Media Player, so it relies on the data center to render the whole video and send it all here via pixels. And it's doing that right now, right over that 3G connection. Now, if you don't have your iPad with you, there's always a backup, and that's your iWatch. So with your iWatch, you can scroll through all your different apps here, tune your FM station, click, get your time, do whatever you need to do. I guess what time it is for me. I gotta catch my stop. Talk to you later. And now I'm at home. And I have my virtual desktop on my iPad right on my home office desk. And it's sitting right next to my iMac. And this is okay, this is good, because I can open up a browser here and I can authenticate in and pull that virtual desktop right off the iPad and bring it onto the iMac. So you'll see everything that I was working on here will stay fully intact. It takes it off the iPad, moves it right into the iMac. And when it's over here, it's got a big screen real estate, so I can even be more productive in here. And I can grab it and move it off to the right-hand side, because on a Mac, they have a thing called spaces in here virtual windows that you can use sort of simultaneously. If I grab it and move it to the right hand side, here we are in a new Windows space. I'm going to go view and go into full screen and so my virtual Windows 7 workspace email full screen. All you have to do is say control left arrow and it brings you back into the world of Mac. Now in Mac I'm editing movies so you can see I got a little vacation movie here to Hawaii uh, with the locals going crazy on the waves. But for now, control right arrow, pop straight into the Windows 7 virtual desktop from work. Keep working, very productive, all the time. All right, let's preheat this thing to 975. That should be about right. All right, now that we have that oven warming up, we're gonna make a little lunch here. Get hungry working upstairs in that home office. So it's pretty nice because while I'm here in the kitchen, I also have an HP Touch Smart computer right next to me here. And of course, family photos rotating on that all the time, which is nice. You can access recipes in the kitchen, to, uh, you know, how to make a pizza and such, run videos and everything else you need. It's sort of at the center of the family in the home. But you know what you can also do? You can connect into that virtual desktop right here as well. And you can run multi-touch right on this machine. So if I open up a photo, I can actually do multi-touch, zoom in and zoom out, and that's pretty amazing. But when I connect into my virtual desktop, I can do much the same. So here I just connect, authenticate to the virtual desktop. The same desktop we were working on upstairs, just as we left it with our email open, bring it down here, and I can certainly do email while I'm here, as long as my hands are pretty clean. I can also open up photographs on my work desktop here. If I pop one open here, much the same. Virtual multi-touch machine connected into the virtual desktop. So the interface here is connected in, works quite well from far, far away. But what if I was really far away? What if I was on another continent, like 200 millisecond delay away? Well, then things would be interesting and certainly more challenging, but we have something for that. And that's Branch Repeater. So I'm about to show you now how Branch Repeater can make the Zen desktop virtual desktop experience when far away much better, make it feel like you're right close to your data. So now we've got the accelerator plugin enabled. Talking to the Branch Repeater, I'm gonna fire off the same, very same wildlife video and you're gonna see a big difference. The wildlife video now is running smooth. The horses are trotting away and all the wildlife is looking real happy. And what's interesting also on the other side, when we look at the bandwidth monitor, we're actually getting the seven megabits per second that we're paying for into this location. So that's great, no longer limited with the TCP back offs. And that's because Branch Repeater and the Accelerator plugin are working famously. TCP optimization, flow control, compression history, caching, all of that brought to bear on your experience. Far away, but feels like you're close to the data center. And as far as the pizza goes, I think I'm gonna order out. And now we're going to get even further away from the office and the home office. One of my favorite places, the golf office, which is a great example of the term work shifting, being connected but being anywhere. And to do this, we're going to take a look at a couple of new mobile devices, one of which is as small as a golf ball. And that's the Nika Sunrise Bluetooth headset by Maverick. In addition to that, I'm going to pull out my iPhone. So with a Bluetooth connection, I can make a phone call. And at the same time, I can put Citrix receiver on here and connect into remote virtual applications over a 3G network. Now the two examples here are gonna be medical applications, so I'm the doctor on the golf course. I'm gonna go in to confidential patient records here first and take a look at this. I can look at lab results and x-ray information. And from that, you know what I see? I think I see 
AP and lateral views of the left lumbar vertebrae demonstrate a distal femoral contusion. Ooh, that sounds bad. Now another application I can get into is the information about the hospital itself. So the emergency room, the operating room, I can see the schedules and from that I can decide how to schedule this patient in for a quick procedure. And based on everything I see, I'm going to recommend uh, reverse appendectomy. That should be about right. Can you schedule that in first thing Monday morning? Thank you. And all of that while I quietly wait my turn on the green. Work shifting at the golf course. Another life saved. So that brings us to the last step of the journey, which is client-side virtualization. So let's look at Zen Client. For that, let's take a look at this laptop right here. Now, vPro architecture inside, format the hard drive, and lay down, install Zen Client. You're all set and ready to install virtual machines on top of here, one or many. The personal VM is installed by me. I put the DVD in, install it, use it how I choose. The business VM, provided to me by the IT organization. I take this away into the world and make changes and come back and reconnect, and all those changes are synchronized back into the data center where it's secure and backed up. So that's the last piece in the puzzle. Virtualizing applications and desktops in the data center, all prepared and stored and backed up safely behind the glass. Everything that happens outside the glass is the end users, selecting the devices they choose, installing a receiver on it, authenticating and connecting, and get their apps and desktops delivered to them automatically. So FlexCast is the flexible broadcasting of these applications and desktops to the users that choose them on any device, at any time, and anywhere. So that's the wow in wow to how. And now it's time for you to see how it's going to work for you. So we at Citrix thank you for all your time, and we hope we see you in the EBC sometime soon. Here, have you ever seen a two scooter before? I have not. Well, listen, they're pretty cool, and I know you want one for Christmas, but you don't want that one. You know why? Why? Because the only thing this one is missing is a shark's logo on it. Wouldn't that be great on the side? And I tell you, it's a 3D CAD CAM app, and so we can do that now.